In this video, I'll show you how to take rusty cab quarters and rockers from this to this. Stay tuned. So this is what we're working with on this side, which is actually not bad. But as you can see, the cab corner is non-existent at the bottom. So we're gonna get that fixed. Now this side's the fun side because the door was broke and nobody fixed it. Water got in here and ate it all up. But yeah. Yep, this is the side that's gonna be the fun side. But we'll get her done. Let's get started. Welcome to Little Buck Builds. We're getting started on these cab corners. First thing I did is slid this bed back about six inches, actually closer to 10, so I can get in here and get this cut out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna verify that our cab corners are the right one, which I did already. They are the right, but you never know because they might send you the wrong thing or you might order the wrong thing. So first step's done. Next thing we're going to do is find where the rust ends, and we'll go from there. So our first step is we're going to grind down and find where the good metal is. Hopefully one of the two cameras will pick this up. Sometimes you gotta watch out, there will be insulation in here. So I can tell from the ripple in the metal that right about here is where a clean spot is. So this might be where we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up here. And then I'll get the, the patch piece, I'll cut it an inch higher. And that way with all this stuff out of the way, I can hold the, fat, the patch piece up and it'll be right where it's supposed to be. And I can draw a line and then do a final cut. So yeah, we're pretty solid above that line. That's what we're gonna go with. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run it along this line I already started, and then we're gonna cut here along this radius, and that's where we're gonna hide our welds and cut down. Let me go get a new blade and we'll get it done. Well, I had my camera on photo instead of video, so uh, what I did is just cut around here. Maybe I'll have something from that camera, we'll see. But yeah, we went ahead and cut out what we were talking about. So next, what we're gonna do, Let's get our patch piece and we're going to shoot for about an inch above this one. And I'll show you why when we get it done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan on this mark right here. Measure. I'm going to go down four and a half from that mark. It don't have to be exact because this piece is what we're going to cut that piece to. And I'll show you how it works here in a minute once I get the piece cut. It's be hard to see. I can't find my silver marker. But like I said, just in general, it doesn't have to be perfect. Say about there. You 
you probably can't see that, but I can. So I'm gonna use masking tape to try to keep it as straight as possible all the way across. And the tape will tell me if I'm going to crooked. Just do a reality check. About four and a half. Not too bad. So now we got it all cut out. We're going to put this over the top of it. And we're going to trace this. And then we're going to cut below the line that we trace. And I'll show you that here in a second. But now we got all that other stuff cut out of the way. We can put this on. It's going to be really close to matching up. If you try to put it over too soon, the, this piece will be out of alignment. Let's move on. nice we have this piece right here so I'll keep it snug I want to tip my sharpie From here, there's two ways you can do it. Some people will do a about a quarter inch below that, and then overlap it and weld the top, or you can do a butt weld, which is what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna try to cut it exact. Let's get cutting. So we'll start by welding this, and then we'll punch this in with a hammer and a punch, and just work our way around. Huh, this has got a little tab that bends over, that's cool. Alrighty, so our next step will be to grind this all the way around, get some weld through primer. Grind this all the way around, get weld through primer. We're not even going to weld this because we're going to end up replacing most of this anyway. You gotta get this ground back down and I'm gonna cut this little tab off back here too. Let's cut it straight with this line right here. Before we weld we'll uh, we'll flap disc this or grind it and treat it. Because there's still some structure here we'll cut the crappy parts off so let's get to grinding
All right, so we're gonna take a brush and just knock all the loose stuff up underneath off around here and up underneath. And then we're gonna put some uh, heavy rust primer on it. Then tomorrow we'll grind off where we're gonna weld and we'll put weld through primer there. We'll probably end up hacking a lot of this off, but for now we're gonna get primed. When we get all done, we'll do the back side of this inner. What's left of it. Ow, I'm careful to this shirt. We're not worried about any of this because we're gonna be replacing this anyway. We're basically gonna get this in and work our way that way. I'm hoping I can do it without removing the doors, but if I have to, we'll remove the doors. Luckily, we only have to do it on this side because the other side's not that bad at all. You gotta watch out some of these trucks, I think especially Chevy, they have insulation in here. So you gotta make sure there's no insulation in here before you start welding because you can catch the inside on fire. And then, all right, we're gonna wipe it real quick with a rag because basically we're just putting that primer on to try to encapsulate and maybe kill some of this rust. So it looks like I'm out of the heavy rust primer, so we're gonna use rust neutralizer first, and then we'll just use regular primer. Like I said, once we get everything done, I'll get the back side of this cleaned up and probably put some undercoating on it when I do the frame. Hopefully this will just help it last a little longer. Tomorrow we'll grind all these spots where we're going to weld and then we'll put weld through primer on there. Just don't want it to flash rust overnight. We have it welded in, but I'm out of daylight. See you guys tomorrow. All right, so we got it all ground down. For the most part, we're gonna go ahead and get some weld through primer on here. While that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and get our piece ready. So this is the primer we're gonna use. First off, we're going to drill some holes along here so we can do some rose out welds when we put it in. Then we're going to take the grinder and grind all the surfaces we're going to weld, and then we're going to do the weld through primer on it as well. Stay tuned. So now we got our holes drilled. Now we're going to grind both sides of those, and about a quarter inch around everything is going to get welded. So that way we can put our primer on, and, that'll, and we'll be ready to weld. So we got those holes lightly ground and all the way around here. Make sure you do your holes on the other side as well. Let's get some primer on this and then we'll get it over there. We'll start getting set up for welding. So I got it clamped in. The first thing we're gonna worry about is this surface right across here. We're gonna get these welded in. We'll pull it up and make it tighter. And then after that, We'll start taking a hammer and screwdriver. We'll work it around and even this stuff out. But this is the surface that we care about the most because that's what you're gonna see. So I'm gonna go get the welder set up and get this fine tuned a little bit more and we'll start welding this in.
typically you'd want to start with your first tack in the middle and then alternate every inch left to right. Um, this is a smaller panel and it's pretty thick so I wasn't too worried about it on this one but if you're doing like a long fender or maybe we'll do it on the rockers you want to alternate where your welds are because the heat will cause it to warp. Typically on these repair panels, the radiuses do not line up, so I like to use a hammer, a screwdriver, and try to round them out and even them up with the original radius. It just makes it look nicer. It takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it in the end. Again, I'm working my way right to left, just making my way around, molding the metal where I want it, then tacking, and getting it all lined up really nice. All right, guys, I'm gonna get this ground down, and we'll start getting some Bondo ready. Okay, guys, we got them all in there. We're gonna get some rust neutralizer, and we're gonna spray this down. And then the first step I always do is I like to use fiberglass for the seam to waterproof it. And then after that, we'll put Bondo on, primer her up, and she's done. Ready for paint. We got a little bit of a gap there. I'm not too worried about that because we're replacing this rocker anyway. Uh, probably from when we had to pound in here and make adjustments to get that straight. But overall, I'm pretty happy. We got one little hole on the corner there. The steel was just weak. But overall, it went in really good. And we'll fill that up with fiberglass. But there you go. And I tested the door a couple times. It shuts perfectly fine. Welcome back to Low Buck Builds. Today, we're going to continue on on this project. We got the cab corner in the last video. Today, we're going to work on these rockers. We're back in the driveway. As you can see, we got a lot of work to do. But yeah, leave it to me to get sick on a four-day weekend. So today is Tuesday. It's after work. And we're going to try to get these in today if we have to bring the lights out to do it. So let's get going. So we're going to make our plan of attack here. Hopefully you can still see. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna probably cut it along here and cut along there. And we got a new piece to go in here. So this one's pretty simple. Let's check out the other side. So on this side, we got this piece right here. So again, we're gonna cut along there then we'll rosette weld this in, put the new piece in. We're going to have to fabricate a piece for this. So we'll just cut out right across there. Feels like the underneath is still there, so we'll probably cut along here. Just get a piece of plate and put in there. Probably have to do a little piece here too. 
we get rid of, well, that was hard. We'll get rid of that. Go underneath and cut it out. It looks like we're going to have to fabricate a piece for this right here. I'm hoping to not have to take the doors off, but it looks like we're going to have to take the doors off eventually. So we get the saw, get loaded up with a new blade, and let's get to it. Okay, so what we did is we went through, we put some, we cleaned everything up with a steel brush. You can see it sitting right there. And then we went through with a uh, rust converter. And then after that, we went through with primer on both sides. We treated the rust and now we're encapsulating and protecting and trying to get that stuff to last a little bit longer. Um, after we get done, I'm going to go on the back side, clean it up, and put bed liner back there. But this will work for now. So while that primer's drying, we're going to go through and get this prepped weld in. We're going to drill holes along here for rosette welds. Then on these edges, we're going to grind off about a quarter inch on both sides so that we can weld it in. And then we'll cover it with weld through primer. Be right back. So here we go, our piece is done. We got our holes drilled, we got it ground on both sides. We we'll ground the edges on both sides. Now we'll put some well through primer on here. We'll get the other one done. Then we'll do the grinding inside the truck. Do the same thing, put weld through primer on, and we'll be ready to weld. Stay tuned. All right, guys, that time has come. The sun is going down, so we're going to have to stop for the night. I got these two pieces prepped to go in. I started grinding on this. Tomorrow we'll line the pieces up, make sure we got everything ground that we need to, and then we'll put the weld through primer on here. Same thing here. So tomorrow we'll start putting pieces in. We're gonna have to make some custom pieces here. And we're gonna make a custom piece across there. And we got a little hole there, the two we got patched, so. Plus we gotta create a piece up underneath here as well. So a lot of work to do tomorrow. I'm gonna go ahead and get all this junk put up and I'll see you in tomorrow after work. All right, so we got this side all ground down. Next, we're going to go ahead and put the weld through primer on and get this piece welded in. So we got this first piece welded in here. It's good and solid. We're going to go ahead and move along to the front side. So on this side, it's going to be the same deal. We're going to get that piece put in and then we'll just do it like a puzzle. We'll start making custom pieces and filling in 
where it's needed. So we got these pieces welded in and ground down. Next, we need to create some pieces. Let's get to it. All right, now it's time for some crafts. You couldn't really see anything here, so I cut it out, but I used cardboard and scissors to make a template for the piece that I needed. Just like that, we have our piece. We're gonna cut to here, and we'll do the final grinding down once we get this cut out. So we got our mobile workbench here ready to go, and we're gonna trace that pattern on some 16 gauge. We'll go from there. So we're gonna put our flat edge against the flat edge. So then we know we got a straight edge there to weld to. And this will give us our general shape. We'll still have to do some fine tuning. So this will get us in the ballpark. Grab our saw. like that, we got our piece. Clean it up and go test. Now we're going to go test fit it and figure out where we want to make our holes for rosette welds. Tip a little bit off this back side and recheck it. We're gonna go ahead and grind the uh, drill these holes. Get this all painted up, the ground down, primered up, I mean. Get it in. So we got this piece coated and weld through primer. 
We got the truck ground down where we're gonna weld and we got weld through primer on it as well. Now we just need to get this piece welded in. All right guys, we got that piece welded in. I still need to do a piece here and then up underneath a few pieces as well. So this is where I'm going to end this video. Um, it's going to get too dark to film anyway, but it's basically just repeating the same process. Um, the next video series is going to be on doing the body work for this. So if you like what you see, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. So here's a look at the doors. As you can see, they're pretty well trashed. Most people are going to throw these away. But the name of the channel is Low Buck Builds. It's not Mr. Moneybags Builds, so... We're gonna fix them. We're just gonna put some patch panels over the top. I'm not gonna go too crazy with these. Who knows, maybe down the road I'll find a cheap set, replace them, but honestly, for this truck, I'm not worried about it. Let's get going. So I don't know how well it's gonna show on camera, but what I did is I use rust neutralizer, and then now I got heavy rust primer. I primed everything up underneath that I could get to on both the doors. We'll let that dry, and then we're gonna start building little patch pieces and getting them welded in here. Be right back. All right, we got this side. We got up the steel all put in. Put some fiberglass over it, it'll look a lot better. So our last project is to get the other cap corner in, and we'll be ready to start prepping for paint. So just like the other side, first step we're gonna do is find the clean metal. So I'm gonna get the grinder. I can kind of see by the bubbles where it's going to be. But yeah, this rocker is not near as bad as the other one was. So this side's not going to take near as long. All right, let's get busy. All right, I got my first cut marked out. We're just going to cut this off to get it out of the way. And then we'll get the patch panel about an inch above that cut. And then we'll do our final cut. Piece them together. Let's get going. Alright, so we got it cut out, so we can put our piece over the top of it, and trace out our final line. Alright, we put our piece on here, we got it marked up for our final cut. We get this cut off. Alright guys, we got it all welded in, ground down. Let's take a quick look back at where we started with this project. I put product links in the description below. I ask that if you're going to buy these products in the near future to please use those links. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps support the channel. Thank you. Alright, so we're basically just leveling out the fiberglass right now. We're going to do a little bit more bondo down there. But overall, I think this cap corner is going to come out really good. I'm going to go ahead and get on this door and this mess and get on the other side. They'll come back. Starting to get the Bondo in and get it shaped. I haven't done a lot of recording because I'm kind of in a hurry. I want to paint this tomorrow. But yeah, it's going to come out really nice. So the biggest thing I'm worried about is the cab corners. I want them to look nice. Um, the inside rockers, I don't want them to look bad, but I'm not going to go too nuts with them. And the inside of the doors are the same way. But it's going to turn out nice. A heck of a lot better than the way it was, that's for sure. All right, so we're going to be starting with 60 grit, and then we'll be going to 150.
Then when we come back, we'll fill those spots that show up in the primer. We'll put a little bit more Bondo there, get it sanded down. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be painting this. I'm gonna go do the same things to the other side and I'll bring you guys back for paint. All right guys, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here. It's about to rain. We're supposed to get four days of rain possibly in high humidity, so that doesn't work out well for painting. Um, I still haven't 100% decided, but I think I'm gonna go up to Ace and get some aerosol and, and shoot this since it's out in the driveway. And if you look at the rest of the paint on the truck, it's rough. I'm not planning on repainting this, so I think uh, aerosol will be fine. Um, but you can tell, you can see these are nice, nice and smooth. I mean, looks a hundred times better than it did before. I'll throw in a comparison of what these looked like before we started. There's a couple of spots I got some Bondo I'm gonna sand down right before I paint it. I just wanna to touch up. But as you can see, 100 times better than what we started with. Let's check out the other side. Again, I got a couple of spots that I'm going to touch up a little bit, but overall, it came out really good. So I've been going back and forth on how I want to paint this. I do have the base coat and the clear coat to do it right, but the fact that I can't get the truck in the garage worries me, especially with the clear coat because it takes so long to cure, and I'm afraid it's going to get bugs and dirt and dust and all that good stuff in it. So I finally decided we're going to go ahead and rattle can it, but we're going to do it right. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and buzz off this Bondo. And we're, first we're going to use 120 and then we're going to go over it with 220. And then we'll hand sand everything with 320, 360, 380, whatever 300 I have. And we'll be ready to paint. So going. If you're just using regular paint, that's fine. If you're going to be using something with uh, sparkle in it, then you're going to need to go up to 600. This is what I use for paint prep. It's uh, denatured alcohol. All right, we'll hit this with primer, do the same thing to the other side. And then we'll start scuffing it up with 320 to paint. All right, while that's dry, I'm going to go do the same thing to the other side for the couple of spots I bondoed, and then we'll get it primered, let it dry, get ready for the paint. All right, now we're going to go through and sand everything with a soft pad and 320 and some soap and water. All 
All right, so we got this all scuffed up with 320. I went about three inches above all the primer spots and scuffed it with a 600 scotch bright. There's some bare metal back here, so I just went ahead and hit that with primer and rust neutralizer just to keep it from making holes later on. Now I'm just gonna run over everything with fuel alcohol and get it cleaned up and then we'll start spraying. I'm just gonna be careful, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to blend these areas. I'm not gonna tape this up or anything. I mean, if it was a show car, I would, but for this job, I, I'll just try to control it. This is what we're shooting today, gloss white. I've never used the quote unquote professional before. I do like the 2X a lot, but I figured I'd give it a shot. Our first coat's gonna be real light. We don't want any runs. There's some, a little bit more of a breeze than I would like today, but we gotta get this done. Just light, real light coat. That's it, that's all we're gonna do. Just a little light coat and then we'll come back and we'll fill it in on the second coat. All right, we got our first coat done. We'll come back and do a second coat in 10 minutes. All right, second coat, full coverage. We'll let that sit for 10 minutes and then we'll come back. We'll do a third coat. I think I'm gonna use the professional on the cab corners. So I just got a little bit left of that and then I'll just use the regular 2X on the inner rockers. See you in 10. Last coat. All right, well, let this dry. I'll give you guys a walk around. I'm gonna let it sit for about an hour and come back out. Okay, I'll give you guys the final walk around. Came out pretty good for a rattle can job. A few little spots that could be touched up more, but it's not a show car. And it's a heck of a lot better than what was there, which was pretty much nothing. Let's check out the other side. So here's the other side. And if you remember from the beginning, this was completely gone. I pretty much built these doors. You can see a little bit here, but I could go through with Bondo and fix that, but I don't, I'm not worried about it right now. That was completely gone. This was completely gone. Not too shabby. Here's a little bit of a difference between the paint, but really not bad for just over-the-counter Rust-Oleum. It's a little brighter, but once this gets dirty, it should blend in pretty good. Overall, I'm really happy with it. It came out better than I thought it would. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, hit that like button. If you want to see more projects on this truck and other vehicles, hit that subscribe button. See you in the next video.